What's up everybody, this is Master Ian Gamer, and welcome to Overwatch 2 Season 6. In this video, I'll be running through all the brand new skins and other cosmetic items that were added in this latest season as part of both the Overwatch 2 shop and the Battle Pass. First up, let's start with this season's brand new hero, Ilari. So taking a look at Ilari's skins and cosmetics, skin-wise, we have her default look right here, which is just her default skin. This is what she's going to look like most of the time, you know, it's... The default, it is what it is. Nothing too special. Take a close up of the weapon though. I do quite like the design of this weapon, the sort of like dual like gun and sword design of it. And then the healing pylon, which pretty simplistic design, almost kind of looks like a jellyfish of sorts, but a cool ability, so I like it. Looking at her legendary skins now, first up we have her base default legendary skins, which can be purchased with just credits in game. And first we have Daybreak, a sort of sun-themed one, which almost has these sort of like astrology-type symbols on her. A nice design. I really like the interior of the cape, the way there's the sort of star design that sort of moves around as it moves like that. Really nice touch to add to the skin. Close-up of the weapon as well. I like the little like numerals you can see along different parts of it, almost like it's a clock or sundial-type component. You do have a straight-up sundial on the top of the weapon there, near where the trigger is. The pylon as well has the little numerals going around, but nothing too too special in that regard. Next up we have Sundown, which is basically just the palette swapped version of Daybreak. Unfortunately, it doesn't have that same cool detail on the interior of the cape, so I think it's a little less impressive than Daybreak, but you know, just a different color scheme basically. Close up of the weapon there as well. And the pylon. Next though, we have her battle pass skin, Llama Pajamas. Yep, a very casual, fun, goofy skin. Uh, basically just her in pajamas with fun pastel colors and whatnot. I like the little alarm clock hanging there. I think that's a fun detail. Looking at the weapon, you can see there's like the whole llama head on the barrel slash blade portion of it. Another little clock as well up on the top. Overall, a pretty fun design. And the pylon, unfortunately, didn't get anything too interesting in terms of recoloring or redesigning or whatnot. Also looking at her rare skins, these are basically just recolorings of the base skin. We have the blue version the red version, purple, and green. Next up though, we can take a look at her highlight intros. So we can look at the default right here. This is what she'll do basically on the hero select screen or if you don't have a specific highlight intro equipped. Very generic sort of pose right there. But then we have Captive Sun. Basically her using her ultimate to charge up her weapon and then shoot out a big solar burst. And the next one is flaring up. So yes, yeah, just another little action-y sort of pose there of her returning fire. In terms of emotes, she has the basic heroic emote, which is just her doing that. She has cheer. Chuckle. <laughs> Deep breath. Have a seat. And taunt. Taking a look at the victory poses, she has the heroic pose. Basking. I think this is going to be a pretty popular victory pose to equip for her. Over the shoulder and stare down. And one last thing to look at is the golden weapon, which, at least for the base skin, doesn't change it too much. Basically just adds, you know, the sort of golden sheen to it, which by default, it's already fairly gold, so not too much of a change there, but it does add that extra nice effect. Now, moving on to the season six specific cosmetics. First up, let's just go ahead and take a look at the brand new mythic skin, which was added for Ana, the A7000 War God. Yes, there is the default design for it, but let's jump on into the customization, take a closer look so we can see the different weapon types here. Start with this one, take a look at it from here just to get a better look. So this is the first weapon type, a very cool sci-fi design. I quite like the floating sphere for like the ammo capsule, basically. I think that's a really cool look for it. 
And the sleep dart has this sort of design, which is uh, basically the original, so nothing special to see there. But if we take a look at the weapon variant, a bit of a different design. I don't like this one quite as much because this seems a bit more generic to me. You don't get the cool little ammo capsule change with the sphere, but still a cool design overall. And the, well, sleep dart is the sleep dart. Nothing new there. Looking at the armor variants, though, this is the first one. A sort of mono-eyed, fully cloaked design for Anna. And of course, the overall skin changes her into an Omnic, which is a very cool change to implement for some of the human characters. The next one looks like this, where you have four eyes and still sort of a cloak design, but more colored, basically, instead of just the white. And then this one. This one, I think, is probably the most outstanding in that you have the cables sort of emulating her hair around her head with the hood pulled down, and then of course the Omnic face mask with part of it broken, revealing a more detailed look at one of her eyes. Cool design overall. But also we can take a look at the different color palettes. There's the purple and white default. Then there's the red and black. It's almost like a demonic sort of look. Pretty cool with that one. And then brown and brown. <laughs> almost like a desert camo type right there. There are also unique voice lines, sound effects, and visuals for this skin, so I'll just go ahead and show off some of these here. I will break this world. And yeah, this is the season's mythic skin. Overall, I think it's a pretty cool one. Anna is maybe a bit of a strange hero to have gotten the mythic skin this season. Um, but if there's one major issue I have with it, it is the fact that there's only three categories of customization. This is something they did last season as well with the Tracer mythic skin, where the seasons previous to that, skins had four categories of customization, and now they've reduced it down to only three. Blizzard, don't do this. This is a objectively bad and just objectively reduces the amount of customization individual players can do with the skin itself. So yeah, please give us full four category customization again. Moving on to the other new skins that have come in Season 6, we have Heavy Metal Junker Queen, which interestingly is actually just a palette swap of one of her older Battle Pass skins, but now it's going to be coming in the shop with this design instead. Take a close-up of some of the weapons and such as well. Again, merely a palette swap of an existing skin, which, you know, isn't awful. Sometimes a palette swap can be nice for a skin, but not usually as exciting as getting a brand new model. There is also the Rugby Epic skin, though. Bit curious that we didn't see this one as part of the Summer Games event, given that it's very clearly a sports-themed skin, but it is just an epic, so nothing too fancy or exciting there in that regard. But honestly, I think the color scheme's nice. Junker Queen also got two brand new emotes, being Swagger, which is her walking emote. A lot of heroes have gotten walking emotes at this point. Usually they're part of the battle pass and also the dropkick emote, which I assume is going to be bundled in some way with the rugby skin she'll be getting this season. Orisa got the carved epic skin, a wooden skin for her that adds a unique head and face texture there. Pretty cool. I think it's a pretty decent epic skin overall. You do get the wood sort of finishing on the spear though, which looks pretty cool. So overall, yeah, decent epic. Roadhog also got an epic skin, Cairn, which is a stone sort of like overgrowth mossy type skin. A really impressive epic skin if I'm being honest. A really interesting design. Taking a look at the weapons and take a breather capsule as well. 
All of them basically have that stony sort of texture going for them. Winston got the lab technician skin, which is basically just him in a lab scientist outfit, and I quite like it. It's very simplistic. It's almost casual in its own sense. The weapon as well, I think, is really cool looking. I quite like the design of this with all the little sciencey sort of like gadgets and tech hanging off of it, <laughs> even with little like double A batteries, or maybe those would be like D batteries because those are pretty big at the back. Basically, some sort of weird lab equipment. So I quite like the design of this weapon. And he also got the relaxing emote, which is basically a new sitting emote for him where he just levitates. Wrecking Ball got a new emote as well, which is Rolling Jog. This is his walking emote. <laughs> a very fitting one for Hammond, of course, just running along on top of his ball. And Zarya got a really cool skin. This is one of my personal favorites for this season, Apocalypse. I've, I've talked about before how much I want more heroes to get Junker and post-apocalyptic themed skins, and this is straight up that. And it looks awesome. I love all the details of like the Junker scrap type stuff. The straight up pistol she has on the back. Like, sure, why not? Why not just give her a little sidearm like that? And then looking at the weapon as well. Oh, I love the design of it. All the sort of metal bits cobbled together. Almost looks like it's supposed to be a flamethrower of sorts with the red sort of hazard capsule attached to the back. But oh man, really, really cool skin here, in my opinion. Probably one of my personal favorites from this entire season. And she also gets the spear victory pose, which goes right along with it, where she's just holding a spear out. Very cool. Ash got the snake wrangler skin. Really interesting one here. Basically just a snake skin type texturing for her hat and jacket and outfit and everything. It is only an epic skin. Close up with a dynamite. The rifle. Got nice texturing on this one here. Bob himself, of course, wearing snakeskin leathers as well. And the coach gun. Bastion got one of my other favorite skins for this season, Fire Engine. Yep, they just turned Bastion into a fire truck. And it looks pretty cool. I love all just like the vehicle designs of it, like the front grill there on the front of his torso. Ganymede, of course, is a little fireman's hat. The fire hydrant on the back. Oh, it's so cool. So cool. Taking a look at the turret form. He's even got little ladders there on those side parts. And artillery form, a big old fire hose just sticking straight up that shoots out shells. This is definitely one of my favorite skins this season. It, it's a really fun one, a really fun idea. And I think they did a really good job with the execution of it. Bastion did, however, also get an emote, which goes along with it. Toodle. A pretty cute... <laughs> a mode of him pretending to drive a fire truck, presumably. <laughs> Cassidy was one of the other heroes to get an Omnic redesigned skin with the C455 Sharpshooter. A really cool one. I love the design of this. Ah, oh, it's, it's a really neat one. These, these Omnic reskins, I think, are pretty good for the most part. And this is probably one of my favorites. It just uh, works so well for him with that single eye in the middle. And he's even still got the cigar as well for some reason. Looking close up at the weapon, I love the sort of jagged like points coming out of the front. Very ominous, threatening sort of design. Really cool looking. And he also got a new highlight intro as well. Shooting Gallery. Them just shooting cans. Junkrat got the Aviator Epic skin. A nice redesign here. I like the detail of the Aviator's cap and the sort of recoloring of his various different bits and bobs. Taking a close up of the Rip Tire. See that sort of like shark tooth and eye sort of like facial design on there, which is a nice touch. Concussion Mine has a sort of army green color scheme to it as does his frag launcher. And I like the design on the cap of the launcher as well. A little <laughs> face with the propeller nose and mustache. And the steel trap. And the detonator. Overall, a pretty fun epic skin. May got Flower Child, which is basically a 70s hippie skin. I guess it fits May. I do quite like the uh, lava lamp type design they went with for her 
cryo tank on the back. And of course, just the whole outfit and the flower and sunglasses and everything. Very, very 70s hippie feeling. The weapon also has a similar sort of design, a little piece logo towards the back. Very sleek. I actually quite like the design of this weapon. It's a, it's a nice one. And she also got a new emote, Grooving, which of course goes right along with the whole hippie aesthetic of it. Farah was another one of the heroes to get an Omnic redesign, the P900 Warhead. Really interesting one. Um, it's probably my least favorite of the Omnic redesign skins. The head just looks sort of odd. Like, I guess it's a robot, so it doesn't really need to have proper human head and facial features and whatnot, but I don't know, it just looks sort of strange. And the weapon, I think, is a nice look. I like the little Null Sector logo details on it, but overall, eh, nothing too particularly special, I think. Reaper got a really cool epic skin, Nebula. Uh, again, I love the detail of the inside of his cloak, how you just see that sort of like Nebula Galaxy star design, and just, oh, the color scheme of it and everything, and the new mask they gave him just looks so cool. I really like this. I think this is a really, really good epic skin. And taking a look at these shotguns as well, the sort of purple with the black, I think just looks really good. He also got the stalk emote, which is his walking emote. Just an ominous, slow walk forward. Sojourn, of course, got her vigilante skin, which is from her animated short, the all black biker outfit. A pretty cool design overall. Eh, I don't know. The fact you don't see her face and there's not that much detail on it makes me think this isn't one of her better skins, but still a cool one and nice to have that direct story reference to her life as a vigilante in Toronto. And the weapon does have its own unique design as well. A bit more chubby looking, I guess, because there's more sort of stuff at the bottom, but overall basically just like a dark version of... <laughs> her motocross vigilante outfit. I do like the addition of the little like, key ignition at the top though. I think that's a funny detail to add. Sombra got the Quicksilver epic skin, which basically just gives her a silvery robotic look. Nothing too particularly special there. Kind of like the color scheme though, with like the blue and silver. I think it looks particularly good on the gun here with the light blue and the way it details it. Color scheme of it I quite like, but otherwise, eh, decent epic skin. But even more exciting than the skin though is the emote she gets with it, Pet Slicer. Yep, she just hacks a slicer and turns it into a fun little dog, basically. <laughs> a really fun emote to have one of the slicers come in and just be a part of it. Symmetra also got an Omnic skin, the S900 Sentry. I really like the color scheme of this one specifically, the purple and like neon green. It gives it almost sort of like alien like vibe of sorts with like just the the way it just feels so vibrant like that. Taking a close up of the teleporter there and the weapon. I really like the weapon with the skin. I love the angular design of it and all that. Oh, I think it looks really cool and of course the green and purple go together very well. And the turret there as well, looking a bit like a D20. On top of that though, she also gets a new highlight intro, Pathway Opened. This is her just opening a portal and heading off. Torbjorn got the Dark Iron Epic skin. An interesting one, gives him a sort of like scale mail type design for his outfit and no hat really. <laughs> he looks like some sort of aging pale dwarf basically, which yeah, I guess fits his design. Looking at the turret, similar color scheme, the weapon. Again, nothing too special here since they are just epic recolorings of his base default. He also gets the gem victory pose, which I quite like. Just giving him a pickaxe and he's found a big old emerald, I guess. Widowmaker got the arachnid friend emote. Maybe uh, maybe not the best one to get if you've got arachnophobia, but fun to see her just playing around with what I assume is her pet spider. Brigitte got the spark plug skin, which is, of course, the skin we saw in the PvE Gothenburg mission and is unlocked by completing challenges as part of the Underworld event. It is a legendary skin and got a really cool casual design going for it. It's not quite the training outfit we'd seen back in her initial origin story, but it's a similar sort of vibe. I quite like the design of things like the mace and the shield as well. I think of cool sort of like low tech or like 
almost like prototype-esque designs for it, which I think look pretty neat. Kiriko got the K2000 Blade Master Omnic redesign skin. Quite an interesting one there. The weapons as well have cool designs. This one looking like a dodecahedron grenade for the uh, Suzu. Really cool redesign for this one quite here. I'm, I'm glad to see them actually giving better redesigns for the different elements of Kiriko's kit. Also with the blade as well, I like the asymmetry of it. It looks really cool there. Really, really, really nice details on this skin. And of course, the Afuda having all the circuitry running along the back of it and the Null Sector logo. Life Weaver got the Synthwave Epic skin, which is basically just a recoloring, adding the purple and sort of pinkish colors to it. Eh, overall, I think it's a fairly lackluster Epic skin, nothing too special, just sort of decent recoloring of it. And taking a look at the other details with it as well. Nothing too particularly special here with this one. Moira got the Rosewood Epic skin, which is a particularly interesting one. A really sort of creepy design there with the flower kind of growing out of her eye. Ugh, it doesn't look very, uh, doesn't look very comfortable having that there. Otherwise, I kind of like the detailing of like her sort of like skirt bits where it's almost like a wooden texture of sorts. Interesting detail and an interesting skin overall, I would say. And she also got a new highlight intro, Power Emanates. Very, very iconic Moira main right there, choosing damage over healing. A fun, fun highlight intro for sure. And last but not least, Zenyatta got a new highlight intro, Uplift. Yeah, honestly, it's nothing too special in my opinion. Basically just raising up the orb and having the camera zoom in. Kind of underwhelming, but eh, whatever. And last for the cosmetics, let's take a look at some of the player profile customizations. Starting with the player icons, we have Null Trooper, Null Sector, Nebula Reaper, Dark Iron, P900 Warhead, Lab Technician, Karen Markings, Rosetta Hog, Aviator Junkrat, Apocalypse, A7000 War God, Carved Mask, Spark Plug, Snake Wrangler, Rugby Queen, and Llama. Also, we can take a quick look at Ilari's player icons as well. We have the Ilari icon, Healing Pylon, Inti Warrior, and Ilari Silhouette. For the Season 6 name cards, we have Null Sector, Null Sector Invasion, Summit Karen, Gothenburg, Rio, Toronto, Nebula Blossom, Wood Carving, Rosewood, Snake Wrangler, Timekeeper, Llama Pajamas, and Eclipse. Now, Eclipse is actually interesting because it seems to be depicting an Alari skin, which isn't actually in the Hero Gallery. So I wonder if this is a skin we'll end up seeing being added sometime after the mid-season patch for Season 6, since sometimes they end up adding new skins during that, which aren't visible previously. So we'll have to keep an eye out for this one, because this one could end up being an interesting skin. And lastly, the Season 6 player titles are Null Trooper, Jump Jet, Slicer, Breacher, Sub Subjugator, Vulture, Charger, Null Titan, Underworld Guardian, Nullifier, and Master of Heroes. So yes, most of these are just the names of various PvE enemies we encounter in the PvE missions. So nothing particularly special there, but a nice selection and very fitting with the Null Sector Battle Pass theme. So there you go, these are all the new cosmetics and skins that were added in Overwatch 2 Season 6 Battle Pass and upcoming shop updates. There may still be a few which we haven't seen quite yet that'll be coming after the mid-season patch, but of course I'll keep you guys all up to date as those get revealed, so be sure to stay tuned. And in the meantime, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below on the selection of skins we got this season. Do you like any of them in particular? Or maybe this isn't your season when it comes to the cosmetics they had to offer. Either way, be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed this video and subscribe, follow me on X, and come join my Discord server to hang out and never miss any future Overwatch news and content. Special thanks to my YouTube channel members who help make these videos possible, and if you'd like to join them to earn some cool rewards, then just hit that join button down below. And otherwise, this is Master Ian Gamer signing off, and until next time, have a great day.